Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Nama Oho Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimate
Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Un Militam Yenatazmai Shri Gurave Namaha Ukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Gari Yad Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurangina Taranam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Sanyavari Pasta Chade Satarane Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dvaiti Gadar Har Shri Vasari Gauravakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama It was 1972. <laughs> it's not 1970. Small detail. I first started visiting the temple in 1972. Moved into the temple in 1973. And uh, then things continued. I was going to read a verse from Bhagavad Gita. Anyway, so I was thinking about reading a verse from Bhagavad Gita, but then I changed my mind when I sat down. Forgive me. Uh, I wanted to read these verses about the holy name. I'd like to speak on these verses. Sometimes we take the holy name for granted. We do not uh, fully embrace that which can be obtained by chanting Krishna's names. One of the reasons is that because we don't fully grasp or understand uh, what is the holy name? Uh, and just like anything in this world, Srila Prabhupada used to quote common saying that familiarity breeds contempt. <clears throat> he spoke about this even amongst some of his followers that sometimes they became too familiar with either each other or one another. Sometimes they even became familiar with him. And if we're not careful, we may become familiar, in a sense, uh, with Krishna in the form of his name. And we may neglect him. Uh, and uh, even though he's so kind that he makes himself so easily accessible, to anyone who chants his name. Mm. <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya has told us in his Sikshastika prayers 
In the holy name of Krishna, commend all benediction to the living beings, and thus he has hundreds of millions of names, like Krishna and Govinda. These names he invested all of his transcendental potencies. There are no hard and fast rules for chanting these names. Then he says, O oh my Lord, out of your kindness you have made yourself so easily accessible in your names. But I am so unfortunate that I have no attraction for them. Very important verse from Shikshastaka, one of the eight verses that Lord Chaitanya left behind to his followers. That <coughs> Krishna has made himself so accessible. Naman Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Punashir Hamrachin Muktal Binadva Nama Namino. This verse also explains how <coughs> Krishna's name is, uh, is bestows all spiritual benedictions. It is completely transcendental, never material, ne sound vibration. It is eternally liberated. Uh, and it is not different from Krishna. And then he went, Kali Kali Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar Nama Hoite Haisava Jagat Histara. In the age of Kali, Krishna has manifested himself in the form of his name. And anyone who associates with his name, it's as good as associating with him directly. This is a verse spoken in Chaitanya Charitamrita about the importance of the holy name. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it is stated Kaliya Dosha Nidhira Jan Asti Heko Mahadguna Kirtana Deva Krishnasya Mukta Sangha Puram Bajet. Then in the age of Kali, Kaliya Dosha Nidhira Jan. He's saying, O oh, King, the age of Kali is Dosha Nidhe, it's an ocean of all bad qualities. But it has one redeeming quality, that kirtana deva krishnasya, kirtana deva krishnasya, that simply by chanting kirtan, Krishna's names, mukta sangha param bhajet, that one can achieve perfection, even in this very degraded age. In this age it is described that men are uh, quarrelsome, lazy, short-lived, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. Prayanal payasa sabya kalavas man yugejana manda sumanda matayo manda bhagya hudu praduta. This is <laughs> symptom of the present age. Men are short-lived, misguided, unlucky, quarrelsome. Of course, we say the age of Kali is the age of quarrel. Of course, above all, above all, that means above everything else, always disturbed. Even those who try to become undisturbed fall victim to the continuous disturbances that uh, <clears throat> we are subjected to day to day in our lives. So, therefore, all, because the age of Kali Yuga is so degraded, dosha nidheda, this ocean, ocean of all bad qualities, it's one redeeming quality, is that uh, it's a good time for chanting Hare Krishna. It's the best time for chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> because any other process just can't work. <laughs> we may try to sit and meditate. You know, even Krishna recommended this and described it in the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, and Arjuna confessed, <laughs> sorry for me to control my mind. It's more difficult than strong controlling the mind. It's more difficult than controlling the wind. <clears throat> Described how the mind is so many so raging, and it's very difficult to control the mind. Therefore, Krishna says, uh, 
if one has controlled his mind, it's his best friend, but if one fails to control, it's his worst enemy. And he also says that for one who conquers the mind, conquers the mind, then super soul is reached and he attains tranquility. For such a man, heat and cold, happiness, distress, honor, dishonor, they're all the same. He transcends the duality of this world. How to control the mind? This is something many people, they don't have any, have any insight, nor many people don't even understand the necessity. <laughs> uh, in fact, just recently, <laughs> I, was, I was reviewing some of the conversations <clears throat> that Srila Prabhupada was having with his followers in 1977. And uh, I happened to be, I was in Boston at that time, and uh, it was the time when our Krishna consciousness movement was being taken to court for mind control. <laughs> it was, it was one of the <laughs> allegations uh, that were made against the movement. And Prabhupada, actually, the the word that was used was brainwash. It was, <laughs> and uh, I was listening to Prabhupada's conversations and says, yes, we are brainwashing. Use the brain is dirty. <laughs> it needs to be washed. <laughs> Prabhupada says, uh, if you're wearing dirty clothes and somebody comes and cleans your clothes, would you object? <laughs> it says, similarly, this age people's mind are just so, so contaminated by so many sinful, lusty, material desires. People's minds are constantly contemplating, as Krishna says, for one who contemplates the objects of the senses, when the, one becomes attached and lust, when lust arises, then he becomes angry when his lust is unfulfilled, then he becomes deluded, and then his, loses his memory, his intelligence is lost, and he falls into the material whirlpool simply by contemplation of the objects of the senses. So, therefore, <coughs> degradation simply ensues if we don't make any effort whatsoever to control the mind. And if we more we contemplate, the more the mind becomes absorbed. Prabhupada says the mind has a process of thinking, then feeling, and then willing. If the more we contemplate, if we don't restrict the mind from its tendencies of contemplation, then uh, we engage in activities that are not beneficial for us or for others. And our consciousness becomes degraded. And of course, because we don't understand the, the nature of the, the laws of nature, we don't know the implications and the subtle laws of nature, about uh, such activities that lead to degradation. And then we should understand that what happens is, is that not only is there degradation, but there are sinful reactions. And those reactions are both manifest and unmanifest. And in due course of time, they become manifest again uh, in the form of some physical uh, disease, or to some legal implication, some birth. You know, these are all reactions to, to our past activities. And Lord Vishabdev says that Nunam Pramatak Kuru Tebu Kama Yad Indriya Priti Apramati says persons who are they're mad. Pramata means mad after sense enjoyment. They do not know that that the, what they're experiencing in this life is the suffering and the experience of this life is all due to the activities performed in the previous life. And therefore, he says their madness is as they try to counteract the suffering in this life uh, by other forms of sense enjoyment, thinking I can counteract my suffering, and they're only creating more suffering in the future by counteracting it that way. People don't know. They just don't know that 
course, sometimes people will look for ways to become peaceful. Shanti, shanti, shanti. <clears throat> and uh, they'll take the various processes to, to find peace, but Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita makes it very clear that for one who is not connected to the Supreme, he can have neither a controlled mind nor a steady intelligence without which there's no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace? Krishna makes it very clear, you want peace? Well, um, you have to be connected to the Supreme. Connected to the Supreme means to, to associate with the Supreme who gives protection uh, and who vishaya vinivartate nirahadasya dehinam rasa vajam rasopyasya param jishtva nivartite. He gives protection by giving that person who aspires to connect with him some higher taste, some higher internal satisfaction by which he can refrain from objects of sense enjoyment. Vishaya vinivartate, that means the embodied soul may restrict themselves from sense enjoyment although the taste for sense objects still remains. But ceasing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste, it becomes fixed in consciousness. So controlling the mind. And I was reading these conversations and reflecting on in the, in the courtroom that the allegations were being made that Srila Prabhupada was, was, had <laughs> created a, 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 a you know, a brainwashing cult <laughs> because he was suggesting controlling the mind. <laughs> and uh, not only was he suggesting controlling the mind, but he was making it the process for controlling the mind so easily accessible because his, his, primary, his primary contribution was his mood and service of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving others the opportunity to come in contact with Krishna's name, which means to come in contact with Krishna. And he had so much faith in the power and the potency of the name. So much faith. Personal faith, of course, in his own chanting. But you know, when we, his movement was being attacked, Srila Prabhupada was right there like a general, like a warrior, establishing no, our Krishna consciousness movement is firmly established on the authority of the, of the scriptures, it's firmly established on the statements made by Krishna himself. He said, take our, our books into the courtroom, let them read all of our books. And uh, he was like, made it very, very clear that, uh, that we have something very genuine to offer to the people and brainwashing or cleansing the mind or cheto dharpana majana bhava mahadavarbina varpana cleaning the heart is something that's required in this age of Kali Yuga because people are so disturbed. Of course, Prabhupada was successful in that court case. <coughs> we won that court case. I even remember as I was reflecting when I was reading this, and uh, it was in 19, I can't remember what year, might have been 74, 1974, and one of the members of our temple was kidnapped, <coughs> and two members were kidnapped actually, by their parents, because their parents were convinced that they were, had become victims of a mind control, brainwashing cult. <laughs> and they hired this, his name was Ted Patrick. He was, <laughs> <coughs> they hired him and to uh, have them kidnapped and have them taken away from the devotees and we went to try to rescue them. And myself and a group of other brahmacharis when we found out where they were we, we went to the house where we, and uh, we looked in the window. I happened to be at the front door and I looked in the window and I saw these big thugs pulling my godbrother up the stairs, dragging him up the stairs. And we 
tried to get inside the house, and, and uh, Ted Patrick was there. In fact, he came right to the door with a steel pipe <laughs> and said to me, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to hit you over the head with this pipe. <laughs> and uh, that's what it was like. People thought they, they had no sense whatsoever. Prabhupada said in our movement, he said, first they will ridicule us, then they will persecute us, and then they will love us, appreciate us. So first in the early years, there was a lot of ridicule. We would go out in the streets and people would laugh and make fun of us. But then during these years, what we're talking about, there was some heavy persecution, court cases. Why? Because we were trying to help people control their minds <laughs> and trying to give them a process by which they could become happy internally and uh, learn how to restrict themselves from all those things which are the cause of all their disturbed minds and anxiety and what to speak of creating so many future distresses for themselves. And as we said that Yes, we won that court case. And the judge established very clearly that the Krishna consciousness movement is definitely a bona fide religion with its roots going back thousands of years, based on the scriptures. And Prabhupada, when he heard the, when he heard the, the headlines of the newspaper, read, it was being read to him about Judge Leahy and his verdict. Prabhupada said, yes, he said, now my movement is, he considered it he says, it's successful because Krishna consciousness had been established as a bona fide religious tradition with its roots going back thousands of years. And what to speak of, the prominent method for self-realization, which was always emphasized, was chanting Hare Krishna. And uh, so, yes, <clears throat> It's uh, something, as we said in the beginning, that if we're not careful, we can become too familiar and not fully appreciate and not embrace the importance of, of chanting. And we may relegate chanting Hare Krishna to, some, some, to the back burner. That's our tendency. It's the back burner. You have other emergency, important things to do. Sometimes even devotees, they approach me and they, with a, it's a question I always get is that, uh, Maharaj, we've got so many things we have to do. How do you, you know, we can't find time for chanting. You know, they want to chant, but can't find time for chanting. How to, how to deal with that? And uh, generally I'll, ask, I'll answer the question with a question. I say, do you find time for eating? <laughs> and the answer, yes. Why? If I don't eat, I'll starve. Okay. <laughs> if you don't chant, <laughs> no. It's the physical body, but then it's also the self that requires food, nourishment. Pushti, tushti. Reminds pushti means some. Nourishment, tushti, some satisfaction. If we neglect, then same thing will happen spiritually. We oftentimes use the example. Prabhupada in many places speaks about the necessities of life. We read in the Bhagavatam, he speaks about the necessities of life. And generally, when we hear about the necessities of life, we think, generally think of food, water, air, sunlight. These are, generally, we designate these are necessities for life. But actually, these, these, are, these are necessities for maintaining life in the body. <laughs> yes, if we want to maintain life in the body, air, food, water, Sunlight, these things are all required. But life also, as Krishna very clearly establishes in the Bhagavad Gita, 
life is, of, is eternal, and whether we he knows min yata dehe kumaram jovanam jara yata dehe kumaram jovanam jara as the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul simply passes into another body at death. Dira statra namuyati, one who's dira, sober, he's not bewildered by that change. The jayate riyate vagata chen, Krishna says, for the soul is never birth or death, not having once been, does he ever cease to be? He's unborn, undying, eternal, primeval, ever existing. He's not slain when the body is slain. Krishna with his ABCs of Bhagavad Gita is giving evidence that life is going to go on whether we're in this body or in another body. So life must have a necessity also. What is the necessity of life? Not what is the necessity of maintaining life in the body. Life has a necessity. The necessity of life is, uh, and we oftentimes quote, Govinda Das, in his song, Vajahure Mana, he says, Edana Jovana Putra Parijana Ite Kichi Echi Parititi De Kamala Dala Jala Jivana Dalama Dalamala Bajahu Hari Pariniti De. He says, Wealth, sons, wife, youth, family, what is there in it? Just as a drop appears on the lotus leaf, such is this life. Therefore, let me take up the worship of Sri Hari, the only necessity. Only necessity. Makes it very clear. This is necessity. Life has a necessity also. Not just that maintain the life in the body, but life has a necessity. And necessity is the worship of Sri Hari. And if we don't make the connection with the worship of Sri Hari, especially who so kindly makes himself accessible to us in this fallen, degraded age in the form of his name. If we don't make that connection, then we may fail to realize what is life's necessity and go on in the illusion thinking everything else is a necessity. But, but uh, chanting Hare Krishna when I have time. I don't have time. <laughs> but if we understand if we don't eat, the consequences will be there. If we don't chant, consequences will be there. Consequences are, we'll forget. We'll forget that Jivera Surupoya Krishna Nichidas, as Chaitanya has described, is that constitutional position, our constitutional position is that we're eternal servants of Krishna. And we'll forget. Instead of thinking ourselves as a servant of Krishna, which is, becomes revealed to anybody who sincerely chants Krishna's name, he's, because he's praying to Krishna continuously, please engage me in your service, please engage me in your service, please engage me in your service. But if he neglects that, then he becomes completely subjected to uh, all the illusory masters that we continuously have to serve because those demands are they're always there and they, they're always pulling yes you have to do this there'll be this consequence if you don't do that there'll be that consequence and if you don't take care of this now there'll be that consequence the list goes on goes on it's never ending right I, mean, I don't have to tell you this I'm sure many of you can you can understand, I guess. It's, it's, it's easy to understand that how we're pulled in so many directions. It's the symptom of the present age, to be pulled in so many directions. Therefore, Krishna says that, that one who's not connected to me can never have a controlled mind or steady intelligence without which there can't be any peace. How can there be any happiness without peace? So chanting, chanting is the medicine. E nechi o shodi maya nashi bharulagi hari nama maha mantra lao tomi mat. Lord Chaitanya says that this o shodi, it's the right medicine. I've come to give the medicine for this age. Hari nama sankirtan. E nechi o shodi maya. 
This is the medicine. If we want to become cured from the disease, take the medicine. <coughs> Just as Rupa Goswami explains in Upadesha Mrita, that the holy name, form, pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they're all transcendentally sweet, just like sugar. But one who's been aff afflicted by the jaundice of avidya, he cannot taste anything sweet. But it's very wonderful that if one very carefully goes on chanting these sweet, day sweet names every day, what happens? The disease becomes, becomes cured, and the natural taste of the sugar begins to awaken, begins to rehearse. <laughs> Prabhupada explains, like a person who has jaundice, when he takes bitter, it's sweet. I mean, it's, it's, it's bitter. When he takes sugar, it's bitter. Because he's diseased. But sugar is the cure. So the more one takes the sugar, although it's bitter, gradually, if, if one carefully goes on chanting these names every day, he says, carefully chanting every day, then this natural taste Holy name is very sweet. And that's actually what I was going to read. The very, the very first verse I was going to read today is, is Maduram Madur ABOP, Mangal ABOP, Mangalam. Bhavanam Bhavan ABOP, Harinam Evakevalam. Maduram, more sweet than all other sweet things. More auspicious than all other auspicious things the greatest purifier of all purifying things. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Uh, more sweet, but when we chant something, it's hard to taste the sweetness because of the jaundice. Jaundice of, jaundice of avidya. Avidya means ignorance. Now, ignorance means to accept that which is temporary to be eternal, that which is not the self to be the self, that which is a source of suffering to be happiness. This is, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur defines this as avidya, ignorance. And so one has been afflicted by the jaundice of ignorance. He can't taste the sweetness of the name. But <clears throat> just as the sun is always bright, the sun in the sky, is, it's, it's always bright. Anybody who's flown before, you know that as soon as you go above the clouds, the sun is bright. <laughs> Even if it's a very cloudy day. But the sun creates clouds. <laughs> and the clouds cover the sun. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, uh, just as the sun is always bright, but it's covered by clouds and fog, in the same way our experience of Krishna's sweet name is covered by the fog uh, of an artist and the clouds of ignorance. And they are covering our experience. Therefore, if we want to actually experience the sweetness of Krishna's name, Namaparada yukta nam namna diva haranti gama vishyanti yukta ni tanyevata kritanicha. The chanting of Hare Krishna is recommended for those, Hare Krishna mantra is recommended for those who are committed, committing offenses because if they carefully go on chanting this Hare Krishna mantra every day, gradually they'll become free from offenses. Those offenses which are preventing us from experiencing us. Pure holy name. Just as the sun burns away the fog and clouds, in the same way the holy name can burn away the influence of the clouds of anarthas and the fog of ignorance if we take shelter of the name. So, although it, we may not experience the full sweetness of Krishna's names, it becomes sweeter and sweeter as long as we... <coughs> Don't give up chanting. Understand its importance. In fact, in this song, it is very, there's many, there's eight verses. It's called Kevalashtakam. It says, What sorrow, 
What a great sorrow. More painful than any other misery in the world. Mistaking it as a mere piece of glass, the people have forgotten this jewel. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. And people, I use this, I, when I read this verse, I think of the story which is told about uh, the disciple who wanted to get some confidential instruction from his spiritual master. He approached his spiritual master and begged him, please, give me something confidential that I will know and I will embrace and accept it as my, as my confidential instruction that you reveal to me and so that I can make it my life. So the disciple asked the spiritual master that question, the spiritual master, he instructed his disciple about the holy name. And he gave him some instruction about the importance of chanting the holy name. And the disciple was thinking, he had some very confidential instruction in his heart, he embraced it. And he thought for sure that this was it, he had something nobody else had. So as he was leaving the ashram and walking, he came upon some washerwomen who were washing clothes. And uh, as they do in India, they're beating the clothes with a, with a stick, a stone or a stone. And while they were beating the clothes, he heard them chanting Hare Krishna. And he was a little bewildered. <laughs> he said, what? I thought he had something confidential. <laughs> Why are these washerwomen chanting Hare Krishna? <laughs> so a little bewildered, but not he decided to, to continue his walk. And then he came upon some fishermen. And the fishermen were hauling nets in, catching the fish. And while they were hauling the nets, they were chanting Hare Krishna. And this now, by this point in time, was a little disturbing to him because he thought for sure that he had something very confidential. And he was wondering now, is, is it going to be a, what's going to, the efficacy of what I've been told by my guru? If everybody else knows about it, it's not so confidential. Then, you know, it's going to be watered down. I don't know. Something. <laughs> and he started to walk back to the ashram, and he saw some boys playing with a ball. And they were throwing it back and forth to each other. And they were chanting Hare Krishna. And he said, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so he decided to go back and just reveal his mind, his disturbed mind, disturbed mind. <laughs> to his spiritual master. And the spiritual master immediately looked at him and recognized that something, something was wrong. So he asked, what is, the wrong, what is the matter? And he said, I thought you gave me something confidential. You told me about chanting Hare Krishna. And I saw these washerwomen, and I saw these fishermen, I saw these young boys, they were all chanting Hare Krishna. What is it? Why, you know, how is it that they're chanting? And you gave me some confidential instruction. So, the spiritual master, instead of giving an explanation to him, he gave him this touchstone. And he told him this touchstone is very valuable. It can turn iron to gold. <clears throat> he explained to him the nature of the touchstone. He said, you go and you try to give this touchstone to those persons that you saw chanting and see if they can appreciate its value and give something equal in return for its value. They can appreciate what it is. 
So the disciple, faithful, faithfully took the touchstone and went to the washerwomen. He approached them, showed them the stone. And the washerwomen looked at the stone and said, They took the stone and started beating the clothes with it. <laughs> and he said, no, this is a valuable stone. He just beat it. Yeah, it's valuable. <laughs> they couldn't appreciate it, of course. So because they thought it was the same as any other stone, they obviously weren't ready to give anything of equal value for the stone, the touchstone. So he went to the fishermen, he showed them the stone, and the fishermen looked at the stone and said, it looks good, they tied it to the net. <laughs> he wanted to use it as a weight and throw it out into the, into the water. He said, no, no, this is, why are you using it for weight? It's not much more value. And he took the stone back and he went to the boys, showed them the stone, and the boys started throwing it back and forth with each other, like it's a ball. So then he went back to his spiritual master, and the spiritual master asked him, so were they able to appreciate the value of the stone? Did they give something of equal value? He said, no. He explained what happened. They were beating it, the clothes with the stone. They were tying it to nets. They were throwing it back and forth like a ball. He said, similarly, many people will chant Hare Krishna, but they will be indifferent. He made this point that, yes, many people may chant Hare Krishna, but if we're indifferent to chanting Hare Krishna, of course, holy name is potent. It will act. But if we want, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is stated that one has to hear about the truth and the beauty and of the Lord's holy name by hearing the revealed scriptures from the mouths of Vaishnavas. This verse was spoken by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. He says there's no other way to taste the sweetness of the name. If we continuously offend the name, if we're indifferent to the name, if we become too familiar with the name, if we do so many things at the same time while chanting the name, we think about all the things we have to do while chanting the name, it's like a, it's like a crazy person, you know. It's, it's actually a form of madness. You know. Krishna's in his name. Imagine calling somebody, please, come here and just neglecting them, paying no attention. <laughs> you're calling them, but you're busy. <coughs> Same thing, Krishna's in his name. But if we neglect the name, we think it's just simply, there are different offenses to the name, and if we think there's just simply a, some sound vibration, or some ritualistic activity that we do every day, and uh, but if we're not conscious that actually Krishna and his name are not different. Binit but nama nami no. And not different. So it's important that uh, we should be very careful to not be indifferent to the name and what to speak of chanting the names ourselves, whether in kirtan, or whether on mala, we're chanting our japa. But Srila Prabhupada came very much in the mood of Lord Chaitanya and taught us how to be servants of the name. Mm. We're begging the name for service, but if we want to be true servants of the name, then the best way to serve the name is by making others fortunate. Mm. This is what Srila Prabhupada did. This is how he actually gave his followers a purpose, a meaning, he gave us the name and he asked us, now you take the name and make others fortunate. Give others the opportunity to come in contact with the name. Now, of course, if, if we have no appreciation for the name, it's hard to convince others <laughs> to accept. So therefore, we have to also cultivate appreciation, necessity. Uh, as Govindada says, the only necessity, <laughs> the worship of Sri Hari, the only necessity. It's, it's what keeps us alive. It's life. If we want to remain alive, you know, this body, it's 
going to go. Due course of time, it has to go. <laughs> but if we want to remain alive, and we want to actually understand that what is the purpose of this life, what is the goal of this life, what is our connection with the Supreme? And therefore he says, wealth, sons, wife, youth, family. Yes, they're important. We have to. But ultimately, what is there in it? Because just as a drop appears on a lotus leaf, it's, going to, it's all temporary, such as this life. A drop is on a lotus leaf. At any moment, it could fall off. Similarly, this life, at any moment, it could go. You know? And also in, the, in this song, a very wonderful part of this song, I didn't read the whole thing. I should probably read the whole thing. It stated, Nishvase nahi vishvasa kadarudo bhavishyati kirtaniya matobal yad harinama eva kevalam there is no certainty when the last breath will come and put an abrupt halt to all one's material plans. Therefore, it is wise to always practice chanting from very childhood. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. I'll read all the verses. We read the first. The second was Abramas Dambaparyatam Sarvamaya Mayam Jagat Satyam, Satyam, Puna, Satyam, Harinam, Eva, Kevala. The entire universe from exalted Brahma down to the lowly clump of grass is a product of the illusory energy of the Supreme Lord. The only thing that is reality, reality, again I say reality, the holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Saguru Sapitacha, Pisa Mata Bandavopisa. That person is a true scepter, or a true father, a true mother, and a true friend also, only if they teach one to always remember the holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Then this one we just read, there is no certainty when the last breath will come, put an abrupt halt to all one's material plans, Therefore, it is wise to always practice chanting from very childhood. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Hari Sada Vasit Tatra Yatra Bhagavata Jana Gayanti Bhakti Bhavina Hari Nam Kevalam. Lord Hari eternally dwells in that place where truly exalted, spiritually advanced souls sing in the mood of pure devotion. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Prabhupada used to quote the verse. Naham tishtami vaikuntiya yogi nam hiriyeshuva tatra tishtami narada yatra ganti madbhakta. It's Krishna speaking to Narada. Oh Narada, you go to the Vaikov planets, you won't find me there. Nor will you find me in the hearts of yogis. But if you want to know where I am, go to that place where my devotees are always chanting my glories. Then I'll be there. I'll be there, and because He's the supreme pure. He'll be there and he'll help. He'll purify. So here, Lord Hari eternally dwells in that place where truly exalted, spiritually advanced souls sing in the mood of pure devotion. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Ahod dukkha maha dukkha 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 taram yata kachar tam vismritam vatna harinam eva kevalam Oh, what a sorrow, what a great sorrow more painful than any other misery in the world. Mistaking it as a mere piece of glass, the people have forgotten this jewel. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is anything, is everything. Diyatam diyatam karno niyatam niyatam vacha giyatam giyatam nityam harinam eva kevalam It should be heard again and again with one's ears. It should be uttered over and over with one's voice. It should be perpetually sung and sung anew. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Trini Kritya Jagat Sarvam Rajate Sakalopari Chirananda Mayam Shudham Harinam Eva Kevalam It makes the entire universe seem insignificant as a blade of grass. It splendorously reigns supreme over all. It is full of eternally conscious divine ecstasy. It is supremely pure. The holy name of Sri Hari 
alone is everything. Anybody have any questions or comments? Comment? Something to help further the subject matter. Very wonderful class. Uh, Prabhupada makes one statement. I think it's in the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita that if one takes part in the not only practicing Krishna consciousness for oneself, but in the missionary activities to spread Krishna consciousness, one will feel himself making gradual advancement. So, um, could you say something from your own experience and realization um, of the value and the importance of, of facilitating other people, getting the facility to know the glories of the Holy Name, to help one's own ability to go deeper and further into understanding its value? Uh. You're asking me to subjectively answer that question. Is that what you're saying? Because that's what you asked for. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure it is. I could. Um, I have begun to appreciate over the years, 40 seven now that I've been chanting Hare Krishna and uh, I've begun to appreciate that uh, by helping others and giving others the opportunity to come in contact with the name by telling others about the importance of the name uh, distributing the name it makes me more conscientious about my own relationship with the name. Mm. Because if you preach and you want to and tell others, if you want to be effective, you have to teach by your example. <clears throat> Krishna says, Yadyada Charati Sheshtashta Tadivetu Rojana, Sayat Pramanam Gurute Lokastara Nuvartante. That whatever actions are performed by great men and common men will follow in their footsteps. Whatever standards they set by their exemplary acts, all the world pursues. So uh, it helps me to understand the importance of my own need to be a good example of myself. Prabhupada says if a person smokes and he tells others not to smoke, I think it's right there in the purport. In, the Bhagav in that verse of Bhagavad Gita. Now, who's going to listen to him? <laughs> so in the same way, if we're telling other people you know, about the importance of the Holy Name, but if we're not chanting the Holy Name, uh, then if we're neglectful of the Holy Name, then, uh, uh, then our effectiveness is not as potent as if we're actually doing it ourselves. And that's, as Lord Chaitanya himself, he stated that I will come and I will teach bhakti by practicing it myself. It was Krishna himself, but he had to come in this age because in this age, people need to see an example. Hmm. Hmm. Therefore, he said, I will come and I will teach by practicing it myself. And he quoted this verse, yad yad so I'm not saying that we have to be the perfect example before we can preach. But what I am saying, it puts the pressure on us <laughs> to become an example. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll listen. And if we don't feel that pressure, then our nature is just to, you know, the path of, the path of least resistance. Isn't that, that's what it's called, isn't it? We're always looking for the path of least resistance. Whatever is easier. Yeah. No pressure. I can do what I want. I can go, I can chant when I want. Nobody's watching. Uh, I can go in the back and, and close the door and go to sleep. And people will think I'm chanting. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just the nature of the disease. 
can I say? It's nature. It's, uh, but it's good to give it to others and to tell others because then there's more pressure on us to become more exemplary ourselves and to be more conscientious about how am I chanting Hare Krishna? How am I you know, taking shelter of the holy name? You know, and that, that's my, you asked for something subjective. And I found it as a great value for my own spiritual advancement. I, uh, I remember when uh, I, was, uh, I was in New York in 1978, I think it was, 78, 79. I was given the responsibility of taking care, taking care of new people who were coming to our temple in Manhattan, West 55th Street. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj quoted Srila Prabhupada as a form of encouragement. He said, Prabhupada said, when you take care of others, Krishna takes care of you. <clears throat> and I was thinking, well, sounds like a good, good formula. You know, take care of others. And of course, take care of others, I took it as helping others in their faith in bhakti, helping others in their faith in the holy name, helping others you know, in, in serving Srila Prabhupada and his mission, becoming interested in his mission. That was also another inspiration, that by giving others and teaching others and helping others to understand the importance of chanting, and emphasize the necessity of chanting, going out with the devotees, chanting, as we used to in West 55th Street. We would go out to, to Rockefeller Center and, uh, and distribute the holy name in that way. It's uh, very powerful. And not only is it very powerful, but you begin to catch glimpses that spiritual life means Bhajaniya Parama Sukra Matra Susukha which means if we, we all want to experience some pleasure, but according to Jiva Goswami, Prabhupada, our previous acharyas, the pleasure comes to the degree that Krishna is pleased, we get pleasure. When we try to do it for our own pleasure, it's not the same. But when we try to do it for Krishna's pleasure, and he's pleased because we're trying to do it for his pleasure, there's something there that you just cannot, uh, uh, you cannot challenge when Krishna's pleased. It's, you know it. It's just like when a person is, is eating some very tasty food. He doesn't ask somebody else, does it? Does this taste good? <laughs> he doesn't ask somebody else, is my hunger going away? He doesn't ask somebody else, am I getting strong? And when he's eating, it's, you, you don't have to ask somebody else. You know. You know. <coughs> so, you know it tastes good. You know your hunger is going away. You know you're getting strength. Same way, when Krishna is pleased, you know. Indisputable. And this is the method of pleasing Krishna in this age. You know, Krishna Vanam Trisha Krishnam, Sankopangasha Pashatam, Yagyai Sankitana Praya, Yajanti Hi Sumedasa. Right there on Srimad Bhagavatam. The method of pleasing the Lord in this age is to give the holy name to others. So when you give to others, I was just listening to Vaisheshika Prabhu, his Be a Giver video. He was telling him, Be a Giver, he says, he says it's something, what do you call it? The, the more you give, we generally says, he said, the more you take, the more you grow. He said, but actually, the more you give, the more you grow. <laughs> the more you give to others, the more you grow. He was, it was his campaign for the 
marathon, which is unfortunately over now, although we can always start it again. <laughs> the more you give, the more you get. That's what Lord Chaitanya said. The more you distribute these fruits of love of God, and the more you experience it yourself. He says, how many fruits can I distribute alone? Please help me. He's asking everyone, please help me distribute these fruits of the holy name. This is some little of my own insight and experience. That definitely, it's, it's a way to please Srila Prabhupada, Lord Chaitanya, our previous Acharyas, and that's the way to be connected <laughs> to the Supreme, to the, our previous Acharyas. Want to be connected, we have to serve them. And uh, serve them means to try to please them favorably, as, as they want, not as we want, as they want. <laughs> Without any motivation, uh, with a desire for fruit of gain, relief from suffering. This is, this is the method. And, but it's so easy. It's not very difficult. Because it's Parama Karuna Pahudvijana Nitai Gora Chandra Sabha Avata Sarasi Romani Kevala Ananda Kanda. But Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda came to give a process which is simply joyful. We don't have to we don't have to voluntarily subject ourselves to harsh austerities. I was in a class in nineteen seventy six in Mayapur, Prabhupada said. We do not need to sit in a circle of fire in the middle of the summer. We do not have to submerge ourselves in cold water in the middle of the winter. He said, these austerities are not necessary. He says, if we want to perform austerities, he, well, he, he said, just follow the instructions of the spiritual master. Our all austerities will be there. Of course, Srila Prabhupada's most important instruction was to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and to give the holy name to others. A little something. OK, I'm, I don't want to. It's 9.20, and we're supposed to stop by 9.30. And you're supposed to take prasadam before 9.30, as I understand. And you wanted to have a kirtan, too.